Osho's Haiku Journeys by Freeman Eng, illustrated by Cassandra Rockwood Ganem. Matsuo Bashu was a Japanese poet who was born in 1644. He had great success writing and teaching in the big capital city of Edo, today's Tokyo. But he was never satisfied with his life there. After a fire burned down his hut, he decided to adopt a wayfaring or traveling life from 1684 to 1689. He made five great journeys and wrote about them in books that have become some of the most well-known works of Japanese literature. Who was that poet? Who walked the fine city streets, but without a smile? Basho, the teacher, gazing from blossomed gardens to the wilds beyond. His students built him a hut outside the city. Then one night, a fire, the poet bereft, of all his words wandered deep into the woods. The oddest feeling swirled around him like the wind. Was it happiness? Forever afoot, thought Basho, seeking the way I could live like this. Basho's first journey, autumn 1684 to summer 1685. In his life's autumn, Basho made his first journey, packing no supplies. Bleached bones on the road. What creature found its rest here? How far had it come? A rose of Sharon that blooms for only one day of its short, sweet spring? In all its glory at one moment, in the next, devoured by his horse. Basho's second journey, October 1687. The Kashima moon, how Basho longed to see it in autumn fullness. With him on the quest, a monk and a samurai, two unlikely friends. Reaching the mountains, the friends and clouds on the night of a full moon, rain. The samurai stormed, the monk lamented, Basho's eyes closed, only smiled. More beautiful still was the moon that was not there, glowing in the mind. Basho's third journey, November 1687 to May 1688. I have traveled west, thought Basho, but I did not see everything I could. A hut standing plain upon a desolate moor for no eyes to see on Buddha's birthday caught between strength and weakness a newborn spirit. Basho's fourth journey, autumn 1688. Drawn by autumn swirls, up Kiso Road, winding like a path to the sky. Mountains above him in layers like clouds, below a thousand foot fall. Perched on the luggage atop a high horse, dizzy from height above height. How Buddha must gaze with compassion from afar on our shaky steps. Basho's fifth journey, May to October 1689. West and east and south, what road remained untraveled, the utmost north? 
the Sunshine Temple, built a thousand years before, still casting its light. An ocean side inn, opening wide his window to sleep on the sky. A sudden illness, a poet preparing for his final journey. Basho Wayfarer travels on the spirit like silk on the wind. Nothing does not glow like the moon, nothing does not flower in the light. Within these old bones, torn easily by the wind, there is a something. The months and the days, they themselves are wayfarers, and the way itself home. Basho's Haiku Basho is most famous for writing haiku, very short poems that follow certain rules about each line. In English today, people often write haiku with five syllables in the first line, seven in the second, and five again in the third and final line. Though that's not the only way to do it, and many haiku poets follow additional rules about what should be talked about in the poem. This book was written in haiku that follows the 575 pattern. So you can see how the syllable counting works by looking at any stanza, like the very first one. Who was that poet? Who walked the fine city streets, but without a smile? Basho's most famous haiku went like this. Silent ancient pond, the frog makes a sudden leap. Splash goes the water. It might not seem like much, but that's the beauty of haiku. They can be about the simplest things, a single sight or simple thought. In just three lines, Basho himself said the writing haiku was easy. You could try writing one yourself. The end. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please subscribe and come back again.